myocardial infarction. This refers to the process by which areas of myocardial cells in the heart are permanently destroyed oh, and it is all also called as heart attack. And this is the pathophysiology of myocardial infarction. First, we have the causes, your atherosclerosis and coronary artery spasm due to cocaine and hypertension. So what is atherosclerosis? This refers to the buildup of fats, cholesterol, and other substances in and on your artery walls or the what you call plaque. So this is the plaque and uh, this will cause a blockage that restrict the blood flow coming to the heart. Okay, the plaque can burst, mahali siyang pumutok, forming now your blood clot. And that blood clot will also block uh, the blood flow coming to the heart. So your atherosclerosis will result in the blockage in coronary artery, reducing the blood flow or your what you call ischemia, reducing now to the low oxygen in the uh, reducing now oxygen in the heart, and eventually the death of heart muscles or your necrosis. Now with coronary uh, artery spasm or the what you call vasospasm, th this will result to sudden constriction or narrowing. Since the artery is narrowed, there will be a reduced blood flow in the heart and then reduce oxygen and eventually the necrosis of heart muscle. So that is a simple pathophysiology of your myocardial infarction. With your signs and symptoms, uh, there will be a pain and the characteristic of it is a crushing substernal pain. So pag nakakita ka na ng patient na nilalagay niyo yung kamay niya, tapos crushing, kinakrush niya yung external area, uh, we need to assess that patient immediately because that might be an impending myocardial infarction. Uh, pain may radiate to the jaw, back, and left arm, and sometimes it uh, it radiates on the abdominal area, okay? Cause, causing now uh, nausea and vomiting. Pain may occur without cause, primarily in the morning, early in the morning, and it is unrelieved by rest or nitroglycerin. Unlike your angina, uh, pag pinagpahinga mo si client or binigyan mo ng nitroglycerin, mawawala na yung pain. Pero kay myocardial infarction, you need to give opioids. And uh, yung opioid na yan is your morphine. And the pain in myocardial infarction may last for 30 minutes or longer. With your diaphoresis, sweating is a specific predictor of your ST segment elevation. Okay? Uh, this nya, since uh, there is a malfunction, this nya and this rhythmia, since there is a malfunction of your cardiac muscle. So, you're feeling severe and anxiety. There are so much controversies with these feelings. Um, but, some of or almost all of the clients uh, feels this way with MI. Okay. Uh, pallor, cyanosis, and coolness of extremities is because of the poor cardiac out. Assessment and diagnostic findings. Um, diagnosis of MI is generally based on the presenting symptoms. The ECG and laboratory result may assist in diagnosing acute MI. And it should be obtained within 10 minutes from the time a patient reports pain or arrives in the emergency. Because as they say, time is muscle. Which means uh, you need to assess the patient fa uh, faster so that the patient may get treatment faster. Okay? Your ECG, uh, your electrocardiogram may show or reveal ECG changes which are your T-wave inversion. 
So, this is your T-wave inversion. T-wave inversion. And this means a zone of ischemia. Okay? And your ST segment elevation. ST segment elevation is a zone of injury. Your abnormal Q-wave is a zone of infarction. So, your echocardiogram. Uh, this laboratory uh, or this exam is used to evaluate ventricular function and may be used to assist also in diagnosing an MI especially when the ECG is non-diagnostic with your creatinine kinase and its isoenzymes there are three of them your skeletal muscle creatinine kinase heart, uh, CKMB your heart uh, heart muscle creatinine kinase and your CKBB your brain tissue creatinine kinase and the cardiac specific isoenzyme here is your CKMB okay CKMB once the cardiac muscle is injured there will be an elevation of CKMB. So, peak elevation occurs in for 18 hours, then after the onset of chest pain returns to normal within 48 to 72 hours. With myoglobin, it is also a heme protein that helps to transport oxygen and like your CKMB, uh, it is also found in cardiac and skeletal muscle. So, once the heart muscle injured mag uh, rise then or the level of this myoglobin will also rise so within two hours after a cell death or with a rapid decline in the level after seven hours with your troponin or your trop i okay, a protein found in the myocardium regulates the myocardial contractile process so, because of the smaller size of this protein and in the increased specificity of the troponins I and T for cardiac muscle, these tests are used more frequently to identify myocardial injury, especially on the unstable angina or acute MI. So, the increase in the level of troponin in the serum starts and peaks at a Similarly, the same as CKMB. Okay? Level rises within 3 hours and remains elevated for up to 7 to 10 days. What will be our medical management for myocardial infarction? So, the goal of medical management is to minimize myocardial damage because the um, necrosis in the heart muscle is irreversible. So, what we need to do now is to prevent or minimize the further damage and also to prevent complications. Okay? The under which you, under medical management is your is our uh, pharmacologic therapy. With pharmacologic therapy. Uh, the medications here are also some of the medications are also the same with angina your nitroglycerin the beta adrenergic blocking agents calcium channel blockers and antiplatelet and anticoagulant medications uh, but with myocardial infarction there is a need an addition which is your thrombolytics and this thrombolytics is used to dissolve and lyse the thrombus diba dun sa artery nakita natin kanina that the plaque may burst uh, resorting or triggering a blood clot so yun yung function ni thrombolytics it will dissolve and lyse the thrombus okay and minimizing the size of the infarction and preserving ventricular function. So, yung mga thrombolytics natin, yung mga kinase, kinase. Yan, may ACE, ACE, ACE sa last. Streptokinase, uh, 
the place, read the place, and strip place. And now, my A is the last. So, those are thrombolytics. Analgesics, uh, usually the choice for acute MI is morphine sulfate. Pero, there, are, there is a study uh, last 2018 about morphine with the clients who have ST segment elevation because according to the study yung morphine increases the risk of death to those patients who have ST segment elevation okay? with uh, another is your ACE inhibitors your angiotensin converting enzyme one of the uh, cause kasi is your hypertension that causes the vasospasm so to prevent that we will be giving the patient ACE inhibitors. Okay? Ano yung mga medication na under your ACE inhibitors? These are the medications that ends with Pril. Your Captopril, your Enalapril. And marami pang Pril. Another, uh, since sabi ko nga kanina, Yung uh, MI or yung, sorry, yung morphine is not okay with the patient who have ST segment elevation. Eh, ano na yung gagamitin? Ito na yun, your PCI na tinatawag, Emergent Percutaneous Coronary Intervention. But this is invasive uh, and uh, it is costly. Okay? Eh? What are the nursing management of myocardial infarction? First, we need to obtain a description of the chest discomfort. So, yun na, it is a distinct characteristic yung uh, crushing substernal pain that radiates on the jaw, the back, and uh, the left arm. So, ganun tayo mag-assess with the MI. Yeah, administer oxygen and institute pain relief measures. Bakit tayo mag administer ng oxygen? Because maglilid, uh, because of the blockage of the uh, artery, magkakaroon ng uh, decreased blood flow to the heart and then reducing uh, oxygen in the heart and magmamalfunction ngayon yung heart, magde-decrease ang blood flow. Reducing also, uh, resulting also to the reduced oxygen that is being transported to other parts of the body. So, kailangan nating mag-administer ng oxygen. And, institute pain relief measures. Uh, morphine nitro or nitroglycerin as prescribed by the doctor. We also, uh, it is also our task to assess vital signs and cardiovascular status and maintain cardiac monitoring. Okay? So, dapat naka, uh, mayroon tayong monitoring sheets for those uh, vitals. Okay? Assess respiratory rate and breath sounds uh, for signs of heart failure. So, what are the signs of heart failure? It is indicated by the presence of crackles or wheezes or dependent edema. So, pag inassess mo yung, R, yung respiratory rate, tsaka yung breath sounds, pag narinig mo ng mga to, your crackles, ganon, this will be a sign that the patient is experiencing heart failure. Now, ensure bed rest and place the client in semi-fowler's position to enhance comfort and tissue oxygenation. And, of course, you need to stay with the client. Kung, uh, kung, wala, kung marami ka namang pasyente, um, let the significant others stay with the client, but they need to report any signs of uh, impending MI to you so that you will you can um, treat or you can assist in the treatment immediately. Big, 
obtain a 12 le uh, lead usage uh, sorry uh, establish an IV access route why do we need to establish an IV access route for an immediate administration of thrombolytics okay and obtain a 12 lead ECG for us to know uh, whether there is an injury or there is already an infarct. Assess distal peripheral pulses and skin temperature because poor cardiac output, sabi ko nga kanina, may be identified by cool diaphoretic skin and diminished or absent uh, pulses. So, Thank you. That is myocardial infarction.